people, and welcome to my review for Seven Samurai. Leading up to the new Magnificent Seven remake, I will be reviewing this and the Magnificent Seven, now the original Magnificent Seven with Buell Brenner. So you might be wondering, why am I reviewing Seven Samurai if it's leading up to the Magnificent Seven? Well, in case you don't know, Seven Samurai, uh, the Magnificent Seven is actually an American remake of Seven Samurai. Seven Samurai uh, came out in 1954, directed by Akira Kurosawa, and spawned tons and tons of American remakes, such as The Magnificent Seven, Ocean's Eleven, even A Bug's Life. It's very interesting, and this is a very, very interesting story. So, Seven Samurai is a fairly basic premise. It basically follows a village who is about to be attacked by raiders, and in order to survive, they decide to hire seven samurai. These seven samurai are going to protect the entire village while these bandits come, though the issue is that the villagers do not have anything to offer them. They don't have any gold, they don't have anything at all, all they have is, meat, is food. And even then, they don't give too much food. So basically it's these seven samurai, huge and noble, trying to step back and be a tad more human. And Many people claim this to be a masterpiece and one of the best films ever made. And I completely agree with them because this is a fantastic movie. If you have not seen this and you love movies, watch this immediately. Pause this video, come, come back to it later, go watch it, go to your local library and rent it, watch it on iTunes, watch it wherever. Just please watch it because this is a masterpiece, an absolute masterpiece that is in my top 20. Let's just get started on what it does. Uh, directing, writing, acting, themes, social commentary, cinematography, art direction, costume design, everything. Everything a movie can do well, this one does. It practically masters everything that you can think a movie can do. Especially the themes. There are a lot of dark, very mature themes that they put into this movie. And it's, it's constant pretty much. There's uh, a ton of subplots filled with very rich themes about family and about what's moral and what isn't and just what's human. It's a very, very complex movie and it also provides quite a bit of social commentary on social structure, which is very interesting. There's, you know, a samurai trying to get something that he probably can't get, even though the other person also wants to get it, you know. There's just some stuff like that scattered throughout that really talks a lot about the, uh, dark themes and uh, has a lot of social commentary in it. It's a fantastic movie. Um, Toshiro Mifune is, is currently my favorite actor of all time and this is part of the reason why because to me this is the greatest performance an actor has ever given. Toshiro Mifune in this movie I said is the greatest performance from an actor ever because he is fantastic in this movie. Take him out of here, and this is a, still a great movie, but not a fantastic, amazing one that's in people's top 20, because he, wow, I mean, talk about a person that became their role. He was constantly, he was, like, he's crazy, he's very strange, yet at the same time, you can tell he's not mentally insane. He's a wacko, but he's not mentally insane. He's fine. He's just very weird, and it could have been crazy over the top, but it wasn't. It was over the top in many ways, but it fit perfectly with the movie. And in fact, everybody in this movie is amazing. The main seven samurai, they all feel very human because they all have their own subplots. Each and every one of them has something to do in this movie, which usually with a premise like this, you'd be like, okay, so there's these, the two on the top, and obviously they're super rich characters, the three in the middle that have some story development, and then there's the two that you never think about, but that did not happen at all in this movie. This, this movie was filled throughout with fantastic subplots that fit into the movie perfectly, that enriched the characters and made them better and made them stronger. Um, and, I mean, this movie is a very, very long movie, three and a half hours, or three hours and 27 minutes, but it flies by. and. I don't require a movie to be have a super fast pace. I'm okay with a slower pace. But still, the fact that a three and a half hour movie like this can feel like two hours is extraordinary just because you're unwrapped in what's happening. It's an epic, and epics tend to be very, very long, and sometimes they feel a bit too long, such as Gone with the Wind. However, this one 
very much felt like an experience. You're just, while you watch it and you're sitting there, you're immersed in what's going on constantly, and that really makes the runtime go by quickly. Um, the direction from Akira Kurosawa is amazing. He is truly one of the best directors of all time. He was able to, you know, just give all of the characters such humanity, even the farmers. There's a ton of farmers, there's probably a hundred of them, yet they all felt like they had their own personality, yet at the same time they had a group personality. I know that sounds very weird, but all of them, each and every single one of them, all fit together very well, and all the farmers, while they felt like all one character, they all felt like one very rich character, which I found very interesting. Um, and the movie, the action sequences, they're very epic, and they're very intense, yet at the same time, they're realistic, which movies never do this these days. It's either you gotta make super fun and entertaining to watch action sequences, or you gotta make realistic violence. You choose one. But Seven Samurai was able to combine them, and really, that was found throughout the movie. This was It's a very large, big, epic movie, but at the same time it feels very small, which is really what's going on, the farmers. Very, very small, yet it's a huge thing that's happening to them. And it was fantastic how Akira Kurosawa was able to craft that, and the world that they make is amazing, and it's shot fantastically. The cinematography is some of the best of all time. It's beautiful, just some of the long shots, just some of the shots during battle. There's so many iconic shots from this movie that you can practically take out, put it on a wall, and call it a painting. It's amazing, and even though it's in black and white, it's a very colorful movie. I know that sounds weird, but it very much is. And you also can see the inspiration on how this movie has clearly inspired so many movies in America these days. Like, you watch it and you think, huh, that I, I swear I've seen that before, I've seen that before, I've seen that before. Oh, that's because Seven Samurai created it. And when you're watching the movie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because that happens all the time. And also, the, uh, the final scene in the movie is astonishing. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it, so I'll, I'll talk about that final scene at the end. But um, just, you know, wait till then. I'll probably be spoiling a few stuff, stuff right then. But if you have not watched this movie, please go check it out. Even if you're not a huge film fan, it's definitely worth a watch and definitely a fantastic movie. Don't be scared by its three and a half hour runtime. It flies by in two hours. And that is why I give Seven Samurai a 9.75 out of 10, or a 9 and 3 quarter. Fantastic movie in my top 20. I'm ashamed I don't own it on Blu-ray yet. Okay, so, I'm going to spoil things. If you have not seen Seven Samurai, go watch it and come back and see this portion. So, at the end of the movie, in the final sequence, they have the seven... There, there's only three of the samurai remaining. The other four were killed during battle, and there are the farmers. There, a few of the farmers had died, but most of them had survived. And they're regoing plants while singing a song while the samurai is sort of standing in the background. And in that moment, you realize the samurai didn't win. They gave up their lives. They gave up everything that they had, but they didn't win. They still lost. And it's a very, very deep theme. And also, uh, the romance throughout the movie, how it ends on such an unsettling note because they see each other and the girl just runs and she continues doing what she was supposed to do. And in that moment, the samurai realizes that he can't be with her. And in the end, the samurai got nothing out of it. The farmers still survive. The farmers are fine. But the samurai got nothing. And that is one of the best themes I've seen put on screen. Absolutely amazing movie. Again, 9.75 out of 10. Highly recommend you check it out. Alright, so that concludes my review for Seven Samurai. Get excited next week for a review for The Magnificent Seven, the original one, and after that, the new Magnificent Seven. I'm Robert Burke, and this has been The Clever Critics. Goodbye.